This car has two brake pedals, and one of them wasn't just for slowing the car down. As always in F1, there is a very thin line between cheating and innovation. And one of my favorite examples is McLaren's genius brake steer system. This system was so clever, it was banned. This is the fascinating story of how McLaren outwitted the F1 world with 50 pounds worth of tech. How Hakkinen and Coulthard had to change their driving style entirely, and how this technology was so ingenious it was banned. In 1996, McLaren chief designer Steve Nichols was trying to figure out how to make his McLaren quicker. The tyres at the time were a bit bizarre. Compared to today's cars, where the rear tyres are much wider than the fronts, the tyres in the late 90s were pretty skinny at the rear and relatively chunky at the front. This meant that the cars struggled with grip at the rear, meaning that the drivers struggled more on the way out of the corners than on the way in. So the McLaren at the time was set up with a decent amount of understeer, and this was to protect those rear tyres on the exit of the corner, as a bit of understeer typically helps with traction on the exit. But understeer is never good, as you likely need to slow the car down more to hit the right racing line. So McLaren wanted to protect those rear tyres, but they didn't want the understeer. That was when Nichols came up with a genius solution to the problem, apparently whilst in the bath. And it was a second brake pedal that would only brake one rear wheel at a time. And so the team decided to try it at a mid-season test at Silverstone and the system was actually very simple. All they did was add an extra master cylinder to the car and a length of brake hose that attached from that extra pedal to one of the rear calipers. In a world where tenths of a second cost millions of pounds, this was a chunk of lap time for hundreds of pounds. When the drivers hit the normal brake pedal, it would activate all four brakes as normal. The difference was when the drivers hit the other pedal. This was the steer brake that would apply more brake pressure to only one of the rear wheels. And that seems completely backwards. Why would you want to brake one side more than the other? Well again, it's pretty simple. As the drivers approach the corner, they would push the normal brake pedal to slow the car down. Then, just as they are turning into the corner, they would press the second brake pedal, which would slow the inside tyre pulling the car towards the apex, and so lessening the understeer. Think about it like this. If we're turning right, braking the inner right wheel slows this side of the car, meaning it rotates better into the corner, making the car much quicker through the tight corners in particular. However, the drivers had to be careful with the pedal as it could easily lock the inside tyre, which would give the car sudden oversteer and potentially cause it to spin. And so part of the solution, on the exit at least, was for the drivers to actually press the throttle pedal alongside the extra brake to keep the car nice and settled as it stopped the tyre locking up fully. Now, think about this, you're braking into a corner, turning in to meet the apex, and then you have to dab the brake steer pedal, whilst also balancing the throttle just the right amount. That's a lot going on, and you have to respect the driving talent needed for this. This genius solution not only helped correct the understeer issue, but also helped cornering aerodynamics as you didn't need quite as much steering angle, and so created a bit more grip in the turns. This system would also help the drivers accelerate away from the corner as well. However, there was one issue with this system. Well, apart from it being deemed illegal, of course, but more about that later. The system could only be activated on one rear tire. So you would need to decide whether you would need help through left or right hand corners. So at Interlagos, for example, it has two really tight right handers. So it makes sense to put this system on the right hand wheel. And don't forget, the slower the corner, the more lap time you can typically get. But this system had enormous potential. Now, as you can imagine, this wouldn't be an easy transition for the drivers, especially for David Coulthard, who already had three pedals in his cockpit as he was using a foot pedal to control the clutch. This is compared to Hakkinen, who had already transitioned to a hand-operated clutch. And so this meant DC would have four pedals to control the car. It helped accelerate the outer wheel and the, under, the inside wheel was being under-rotated and it would help then reduce understeer uh, and bring the okay. nose in. Oh, wow, that sounds incredibly difficult. Their driving style would also have to change as they would have this new brake pedal to use going into the corners. Now, in my opinion, this would be pretty tricky to get used to as it's quite an unusual technique. But given some time, it would have become second nature to Coulthard and Hakkinen. And given the enormous potential for extra lap time, as a driver, you'd be sure to figure it out. The thing that makes you go better, go faster, you learn how to do it pretty quickly. It yeah. But how much advantage did it actually give McLaren? Well, before I answer that, meet one of our subscribers, Ricky. He'd never driven on track before, and we flew him from New York to Paul Ricard to drive a real F1 car. 
We're going to release the video when we pass 1 million subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to click that button right now. So back to how much faster this McLaren was. Mika Hakkinen was the first driver to test the system as it was easy to install on his car. And on his first run with the extra pedal, he immediately went half a second quicker. That's just absolutely incredible. And so the guys at McLaren were ecstatic. They knew they had hit on a winner. Now, if you're looking to work in Formula One or motorsports in the future, you're going to need to understand Formula One from the bottom up. And classical mechanics are a great place to start. And the best place to learn about this is with today's sponsor, Brilliant. They are the best place to learn about science, technology, engineering, and maths with interactive courses that enable you to learn by doing. Now, my recommendation would be to take the course on classical mechanics as it uses Formula One as a case study, building your knowledge of friction, aerodynamics and torque. And just look at this, it's even basing sections on the Lowe's hairpin in Monaco. This course is going to be right up your street if you're an F1 fan. But what's best is that you can learn at your own pace, with courses that are specifically designed to build from the fundamentals up. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash drive61 or click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And so the next question is, why don't we see it on cars today. Well, back when it was first installed on the McLaren during the 1997 season, McLaren went on to take their first wins since Ayrton Senna in 1993. But after the Austrian Grand Prix in 97, F1 photographer Darren Heath got his photos developed and noticed that the McLaren's rear brakes were glowing red coming out of corners, which when you should be trying to accelerate as fast as possible, is very unusual. He took his suspicious photos to Matt Bishop, editor of F1 Racing at the time, and the two devised a plan to get closer to the McLarens, after correctly theorising that they were using an extra brake pedal. And so, as fate would have it at the following race, the Luxembourg GP at the Nürburgring, both McLarens would retire, two laps and a couple of yards apart, right in front of Heath. He was able to sneak his camera into the cockpit of Mika Hakkinen's car, who forgot to put on the steering wheel. And he took this famous photo, exposing McLaren's secret. And of course, Ron Dennis was absolutely fuming. As the 98 season got underway, McLaren's system had developed and their car had become a front runner. They now had a brake line on both rear calipers and the drivers could flick a switch on the steering wheel to choose which side would be activated in any particular corner. And this distinction was important. As rules say, if the system was automatic, it would have been illegal as that would have made it an electronic driver aid. But the problem for McLaren was that now everyone knew about it. Though inevitably other teams attempted to match it, but no one was able to figure out exactly how they did it. During the off season, other teams sent their own proposals to the FIA for them to judge their legality, but they were rejected. Williams proposed an electronically controlled system that turned off all the brakes except the right rear, which of course the FIA said no to on safety grounds. And can you really blame them? The day before the 98 season opener, in Australia, six teams made an official complaint to the FIA to get the system banned. But the FIA deemed it legal, for that race at least. After more lobbying from rival teams, mainly Ferrari, the system was banned after the second race in Brazil, but not before Hakkinen would take two crucial wins to start the season, putting the team on track for a title fight they would eventually win. So, was it exactly cheating? McLaren's system was banned under this article of the F1 technical regulations, under the banner of four-wheel steering. Problem with this is that McLaren's system didn't use four-wheel steering only the front two wheels turned as normal. It only changed the speed of the wheels rather than changing their direction. So it wasn't actually cheating. McLaren were within the rules all along, those clever, clever engineers. So why on earth did it get banned? Well, it was a combination of factors. Firstly, as we've mentioned, other teams did a good job of convincing the FIA that it should be banned. Ferrari even sent the FIA photos of tanks that used four wheel steering as evidence to prove McLaren's system was illegal, which is, again, pretty bizarre. And for some reason, the FIA agreed with them. But it also turns out that McLaren kind of screwed themselves with one thing they named the system brake steer, which made things difficult when they were arguing that it wasn't in fact a steering system. A bad choice of name and proof that in F1, every detail counts. Was it cheating or was it just clever engineering? Let us know in the comments below. This system is kind of like the active suspension on the famous Williams FW14B. And we made a video about why that was banned here. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.